Hi everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Alana and I am an acrylic artist. Thanks so much for stopping by to paint with me today. Today we're going to be painting a fun little design that uh, I just thoroughly enjoyed painting. Let me switch my camera over here. We're going to be painting this cute scarecrow. I've titled this Future Scarecrows. I loved painting this. I've had this design in my head for a couple of years. Finally got to sit down and paint it a few days ago. And I think it is so whimsical and so fun. And I just love how it turned out. These bales of hay that almost look like cinnamon rolls. I think they're so cute. I've got my corn stalks back here and my fun little sun, but my scarecrow is the prize in this painting and isn't that scarecrow just adorable. I will be painting with Deco Art Americana acrylic paints on this project and I want you to use your favorite brushes. So let's grab our supplies and let's get painting. Okay, we're gonna start on this piece. I have applied a coat of multi-purpose sealer to it and let that dry. And then I just put a couple of lines on here for some hills to uh, separate the land from the sky. And I'm gonna start painting the sky in. Now it's gonna take a couple of coats. So the first coat's just going to be uh, a nice easy coat of this color. And then on the second coat, we're going to blend in some white to maybe represent some clouds. So I'm starting with Blue Haven for my sky. Not being overly careful here. I will come back and do my edges so that everything is nice and painted in. Okay, so now I want to work on my land here and I want the two to be a little bit different color, to be more separated. So <clears throat> I'm going to take some, um, this is golden straw and I might mix a little bit of white with it. I don't want it to be quite a moon yellow color, we will be using moon yellow in this design probably so I'm just gonna paint this land in this hill back here I guess I should say with this color and then I'm just gonna wipe my brush off I'm not going to remove all the paint out of it and go into some raw sienna and I'm gonna put that color down here a little bit of water in my paint and I still got a little bit of that yellow in there. It's mixing with it perfectly fine. Gives it a little bit of a two-tone color. And we're just gonna paint this. The rest of the arrow will be this color. You wanna let it dry, do your edges, and then put a second coat on here. we're going to put our line drawing on. So I just wanted to show you the first coat and have you work on it. And the second coat will be exactly the same. Um, I will come back and show you on the second coat though the sky because I want to um, put some clouds on the sky there in the sky. So I want to get this all completely dry. I'm going to go to a little bit smaller brush when I go to the second coat in the sky because I want to be able to work that smaller area. This was The bigger brush was good for just laying in some paint. This is a three quarter inch flat brush here. So um, let's get this dry. We're going to come back and work on the sky. Okay, I've got my basic background dry. Now I want to put a sun on here. This wasn't originally going to be in this design, but um, since I've painted the background, this kind of popped into my head and I really want to do it. So I'm going to put a bright sun right here, like the sun is just coming up. And we're gonna paint that in with some bright yellow, a little bit of white mixed in with it. So I'm just, 
taking my bright yellow and getting a little bit of white, mixing them together. It's going to get this light yellow on here. And we're going to start with this color. Right along our horizon right there. So we're going to start with that color right there. And while that's drying, let's add a few little clouds into the sky here. Now you can use any brush that you like to put clouds in with. I'm going to use this really soft domed uh, to Dynasty brush. The size is a number 12. If you've got something a little bit smaller, that would probably work as well. So let's just zoom in here. I'm just going to grab a little bit of white on this brush and kind of blend it in to the tip of the brush. Touch my paper towel. Remove any buildup that's on the end. And then just come in here and scumble in some clouds. And you do not have to be exact or perfect or anything. We're going to be adding some rays coming off of our sun. But this is just a soft little scumble. You can use a much stiffer brush than I'm using. I just want these soft little um, clouds to be on here <clears throat> and um, you know we're not going to see a lot of the sky over here but I'm still going to put my clouds on there. Once we put our scarecrow on there we won't see much of that. So I'm using this brush dry and I'm going to put this up on my easel when we get into some more detail areas here. So just a gentle little rubbing of some clouds. Okay, that looks pretty good. I put it up on my easel for you. Kind of see it myself a little bit better and hopefully you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to brighten those here in a minute. I'm going to be using this brush again. So I'm going to just clean it like I would my mop brush and take it to a damp place and remove any excess paint in there and then dry it off on a dry place and then I can use that again here in just a little bit to brighten up my clouds. I want to get a quick second coat on my my sun with a little bit <coughs> of that um, bright yellow and white mix. get it in there. Okay, so while this is wet, I want to keep that lightest color right there. <clears throat> I'm going to side load my brush into some burnt orange and let that blend with that yellow in my brush right there. And I'm going to put this, I'm going to flip the orange so that it is on the outside edge of my sun. And float this on here while the yellow that I painted in is still wet. So I can get this to blend nicely here. No moisture in my brush. I mean, my brush is damp, but I don't have any extra moisture in my brush. And we'll bring that down into the sun just a little bit. And a little bit of a hard line there, so I'm just going to soften that with my finger. I don't want that to be quite that hard of a line there, so I'm going to quickly dry it. yellow. I think I'll put a little bit of orange on my brush as well. I want to try and soften that line. A little bit. I definitely want the, the yellow and white down here. 
wipe my brush off and now I'm just going to blend grab me some more orange and blend and just play around with your sun and make it I still feel like I have too hard of a line on that outside edge so I'm going to back it down with that yellow and then go back over it with my orange everything is fixable I did not want that much orange on the outside edge so I'm really going to work that orange into my brush this time tap off and then try to make that a little bit less a little tiny bit of water can't have too much water in my brush because I'm doing wet on wet and it will just lift the paint and then it will be making a hole in my painting a little bit more of that bright yellow down here so that looks much better I will be darkening that but it's good for me to start with okay while this is drying I want to put another layer on my clouds so again I'm going to load that soft dome brush and tap some off and I'm just going to tap this on the tops of some of my clouds get me some of those brighter edges to my clouds I like how soft this brush is so it makes it really nice for tapping just a little bit of fun stuff on our clouds okay so <clears throat> I'm going to remove the excess paint from my brush Okay, I really want to play this sun up. <clears throat> I want the whole piece to be a little more playful. So I've got a um, zero flat brush here and I'm going to take my yellow and white and I'm going to paint in some rays on the sun. Um, if you don't want rays on your sun then you don't have to do this but this is that yellow and white mixture and I'm really just going to be playful with these and just have a little bit of fun with them just making some triangles some very long triangles I'm bringing it into the Sun all the way down to that horizon and then we'll finish a couple over here and we'll repeat this um, color on here here okay so I'm gonna repeat that color I want it to, to get good and dry and then I'm gonna add some orange coming from close to the Sun itself going out and uh, I think I may outline that and make it really pop out and stand out so while it's drying let's add a little bit of color onto our clouds we're gonna go with some yellow here I'm gonna mix a little white in with it because I don't want it to be extremely bright yellow tap that off onto my paper towel and then I'm gonna tap a little bit of yellow more towards the bottom of these clouds it's a really soft yellow on here get it on the white part of your clouds if you get it into the blue background then it's going to be turning green I'm just gonna keep it mostly close to 
um, where the sun is. Grab a little bit more of the yellow and tap a little bit brighter on these ones that are much closer. And get a little bit of the glow on them. And I haven't put the orange on my um, rays yet, but I can go ahead and tap a little bit of orange, maybe not that much, into my clouds. Give it a little bit of reflection of the orange. That was a little bit too bright, so I'm going to clean off and go back into my yellow. And tap on there. Take that down just a little bit. I'm going to clean my brush, all the color out, and go back into my white. So clean it off on your wet part of your paper towel. And then dry it off. We're using it dry. And let's make some brighter. Stuff on our clouds. That orange is just still a little bit too bright for me. I'm going to go back into some yellow. Tap that on there. We don't want to see a whole lot of that orange on there. I mean, we want a little bit of reflection of it, but I don't want my clouds to be orange. You know what I'm saying? Go back into some white. Okay, that's pretty fun on there. So let's finish out our, get the paint out of this brush before I go much farther. I don't know if I'm gonna need it again, but I do wanna have it cleaned out. So, get a wet spot here on my paper towel, clean it out. I'm going to go back to my rays here and um, paint them back in with some yellow. I'm going to do one at a time here because I want um, to add some orange in there while it is wet. So I want a little bit of white out here on the end. Wipe my brush off, pick up just yellow pull that, wipe my brush off, grab a little bit of orange, and maybe a little bit of water, and just bring that orange out into the ray a little bit, and we're going to do this for each one of them. So it's the yellow and white at the tip. Wipe off, grab some yellow, wipe off, grab some orange, mix it in with a little bit of yellow so it's not quite so stark, and we'll pull that orange. So we're getting some fun little rays here. Okay, so we're going to go all the way around and do each one of these. I'm going to do one more. It's the white and yellow on my brush. It goes out here at the tip. Wipe off, pick up just the bright yellow. Add that. Wipe off, pick up a little bit of orange. And blend it with a little bit of yellow. And then just pull that into the ray. And so we're going to do all of our rays the exact same way. 
I'll just go off on camera and do those so it doesn't take so much camera time. Okay, I want to put a little bit of a highlight down here or a lighter area with just white in the center of my sun. Just tap that and then grab some yellow, that bright yellow, and put that next. I want my sun to be a little bit brighter than it is. And I'm going to take the yellow all the way out. Now you can use a red, um, cad red, some other color. Um, I'm not really sure how my palette is going to go at this point. But if there's another color within the palette that you um, would prefer to use on your sun, then go ahead and do that. And I just want to make sure this these look connected not just floating out there so I'm going to make sure my orange is touching here and I think that will be pretty good for our sun it's a fun little sun I think the clouds look pretty good um, of course you can go back in and tap some more white on them if you feel they need them I do kind of feel like mine needs a little bit of right just sitting on the top of them okay those look pretty good all right we're going to work on the horizon back through here I don't want it to be just blue along there so we're going to add some color in there and change that up a little bit Alright, let's work on the lower horizon here and we'll be pretty much done with our sky. I'm going to take that burnt orange. I need to get my other palette out here. I just had this out to do base coats. So I've got my burnt orange and yellow. I'm mixing them together. I want to put a little bit of glow at the horizon. So I've got just an edge of my brush loaded here. I don't want the yellow to be prominent on this because um, I'll turn my sky green. So we're going to go with just a little side load float. Getting a little bit of a cast shadow here. And we're just going to float this along the horizon. I don't want to go over my sun. I want my sun to stay Let me grab a mop brush because that's not smoothing out like I would like it So I'm going to mop that and it will take off a little bit of the paint and then I'm going to smooth it out I want to make sure I do not have um, that I don't have a cast shadow, you know, from the paint being too far over on my palette. I definitely need to get my regular palette out here. This is, I want a very pale orange here. So this side might be just a little bit darker than what I would really like it to be. I'm going to go over my rays right there, but I'm going to come back and add the white back onto it. Alright, let me very gently mop that. I got onto my heel, but that's okay because I have more coats of paint to put on my heel. So we just want to see a little bit of that um, 
glow probably a little bit darker next to the sun and getting lighter as it goes out so I'll darken these areas here and bring that glow out a little bit now if your if your paint is not pretty much dry there you're just going to lift it so make sure that you've got your paint dry right there first so that was the orange and yellow mixed together and now I'm going to go back and touch up these ones that I got um, color on because I still want the tips of my rays to be white yellow on this one. A little bit of white. need just a little bit more white in the center of my sun or some really light yellow just play around with the center here and brighten it up just a little bit maybe put a little bit more yellow in there mm, that looks much better I like that Okay, so if you got over too far onto your clouds with that float, again, just take your little stipply brush or whatever you used for your clouds and tap a little bit of white back on there and bring those clouds more to the front. We don't want them pushed to the back, so bring them a little bit to the front. And that's looking pretty good. I'm liking how that's looking. So I want to do a little bit of floating along the top edge of the sky. So we're going to do that with some white and then I am going to go change my palette here. So let's grab a little side load float of some white. I might come back after I get this done and feel like it needs to be darkened. For now, I feel like it needs just that little bit of light up there on the top edge. And I don't have hardly any paint on my brush here. Just skimming a very small amount up here. Just along that edge. It's the brightest part of the sky, it's farthest away from us when we're down here. So that looks pretty good. Okay, let's work on this little hill right here. So I want to grab some moon yellow. Now if you don't have moon yellow, you can take your golden straw and add a little bit of white to it and make a pretty close to a moon yellow. And of course I want my golden straw that is my base color and a little bit of antique gold. Antique gold. And some burnt umber. Trying to get all the colors I will need for this small area. I drew this pattern out such a long time ago. <laughs> I'm trying to remember in my mind exactly what it was that I was um, envisioning here. So um, I think I'm going to make some corn stalks growing through here. And then we're going to have bells of hay here, our scarecrow over here on this side, and of course the bells of hay and the corn stalks, that's all future scarecrows. <laughs> so. All right, 
so for our um, grab my water mister I like to put water on the edge of my palette so I have clean water that's quick to get to stray hair over there okay so I want to start at the back here and make it a little bit lighter I might put some white out as well or some oyster beige it's a light color and we're going to be using that probably later so I'm going to mix a little bit of white and yellow together here and get it a little bit lighter and we're going to put this on the back hill back here maybe not quite so bright on that edge maybe add just a touch more white as we come down this edge because it will be the brightest right here in front of the sun and coming away from it and we'll probably wash a little bit of orange over that to settle that all down in there sure that there is no gap between my sun and my land here. No gap. Okay, grab a little bit more moon yellow and I'll work that back to this edge and up. Now I'm going to go in, I think I'm going to go into my antique gold now and grab a little bit of that and I'm just going to tap some of this down through here it doesn't have to be too perfect through here we're going to add our corn stalks so a lot of that we won't even see at all okay I need to get that dry I do want to put a little glow of that orange on there Let me try that real quick. Okay, let's start adding some corn stalks. That's what's going to be on the hill back here. So I don't really know what corn stalks look like, but we're going to start with our antique gold. And we're just going to kind of wing it. These are going to be corn stalks that are ready they are done they are no longer producing corn and they're ready for you to pull up and use in your scarecrow if you want as hair or in the legs for stability or for sleeves in the sleeves for stability whatever however you want to make your scarecrow that's how we're going to do it here all right, so I'm going to take the, um, I'm just using a small round brush, and I'm going to take the brush and kind of make some, um, some dead leaves. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to call these on here. Maybe a little bit of the moon yellow down here. Ooh, that's got a lot of water. I had to spritz my palette because everything was starting to dry out a little bit that was a ton of water so try to find a little bit of a medium value there and then all these little twiggy things at the top we'll add some of those in there at the top with a detail brush here Right now we're just kind of getting the look of some leave, dead leaves stuff on here. So I'm just making a little arched area. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit tighter here. And just play around between your yellows because depending on where you're painting at, you want to be able to see what you're doing here. and make them look a little bit more a little 
little bit more corn stocky. And it's just really just some tapping of, oh, I can't see that, so I'm going to go into my lighter color here. Add a little bit of that, see if I can see it. This is definitely a fall scene. A little bit of light. Just a little, almost like an, the end of a candy cane, only it's wiggly. Wiggly, wiggly. This definitely needs to be a little darker here. This corn stalk's got the leans. And then we'll have a couple over here. These are getting a little bit farther away, so we don't have to be too detailed on them. So I want to wipe my brush off and get a little bit of that light yellow, maybe a little bit of white with it. So I can kind of create a little bit of a highlight on these, just on the tops of them. So we can kind of see where they're at. You can put as many of these little limb leafy things on yours as you want to. want to see, make sure that we know where the um, center of the corn stalk is, so we don't want to lose that, that's for sure. And a little bit lighter on here. Just try not to make them too awful smooth. that crooked one. You know, there's always one in the field that doesn't grow straight. Okay, looks like we're getting some, getting a good start for our corn stalks here. I'm going to grab a detail liner because I want to put some stuff coming out of the top. All right, so I've got a uh, 50 uh, liner here. I want to put some stuff coming out of the top. I've got some oyster beige out, so I'm going to use it to see if I can create. I might have to start with my antique gold and put some dark stuff coming out first. Some little Let me thin my paint a little bit. We can put this stuff, um, we can put some coming out down here as well. When we go to our lighter color, we can add some of this down below. Yeah, I only know what corn stalks are when I drive by them on the road. I usually used to decorate my porch with corn stalks every year. I haven't done that for a few years. So I'm going to put some lighter color at the tips out here. This is the Oyster Beige. I didn't want to go straight white because I thought it might be a little bit too stark. And you can put some of this coming off of your stalks in some other places. You, know, you, can make, you can make them as detailed as you want them to be. I think I'm going to put a little bit of burnt umber on these. burnt umber here. I still got a little bit of that oyster beige in my brush so it's going to help tone it down a little bit. And I'm 
I'm going to put this on the left sides. Just kind of scooting it down the center and underneath on the lower side of the um, leaf stuff that's coming off. Just try to be as loose as you can here. No death grip on your brush, no controlling anything. We're just putting a little bit of dark in here. We get too much, we can come back with our gold and put a little bit of that in there. This one got a little dark, so I'm going to put a little bit of stuff on there. I need to get my uh, graphite lines off of here. So I'm just going to remove that with a damp brush. I haven't put paint on the graphite line, it will come right, right off. So you don't have to worry about that. Get that off the bottom, that's going to help me a little bit. Okay, back to my little brush here. I think I want to put a little bit of the light yellow on here, which is the moon yellow, so let me thin it down. I might add a little bit of white to it. Just want that little bit of, whew, or a lot of highlight on there. And this is going to be on the side that's closest to the sun. Again, it's just a little tap and a wiggle. Nothing spectacular. Most of them, the ones that are farther away, can be less bright. And of course, they can have more than one growing in place. So let's add some dried out old grasses underneath. I'm going to start with the burnt umber. I'll start with our darkest color and build from there. Ooh, a little bit too much paint. Just want these to be little, not as big as my corn stalks. This is at the base of every corn stalk here. Got them all there. That's our first little layer of grasses, and we're going to add some more in here, do some shading around them, create shadows from the sun. It's going to be super cool. Okay, let's add a few little strokes of antique gold or um, golden straw, either one. Probably have to do golden straw here. Well, I might have to do moon yellow because neither one of those is showing up. So let's go to moon yellow. And add just a couple. Yeah, let's just do the moon yellow. A couple of little tiny little strokes down here. Ooh, big ones. I'm just barely letting the brush touch. I might have to go over this twice if it fades down in there or add a little bit of white to the moon yellow. because it's just going to be a couple of strokes here. Okay. Those aren't real noticeable. We don't have to add too much detail on those. Um, let's put some soft black out on our palette. We're going to shade. 
at the base of the corn stalks with some burnt umber first. And burnt umber is pretty transparent, so it's a perfect uh, color for applying our first shading under these. So just put it a little bit, and we can start pulling it a shadow away from the sun. So I want to make sure we get our shadow underneath our stalks. So make sure you get that first. Okay, I'm going to repeat that with a little bit of soft black more to the right side where the more shadowy part of the shadow will be. And you know, you can fill in these corn stalks and put way more in here than I put in here. All right, so I've got a little bit of soft black. I've got it on this corner, but I'm gonna flip my brush so that it is on the edge that's gonna be farther away. because I want that to be on the more shadowy, you know, the side away from the corn stalk itself. And you can just do the burnt umber twice if you, you know, don't want to do the soft black on there. I'm going to take a little bit of that soft black and really put it underneath the stalks. I really want it dark right where they are in the ground. Now, if you want to put some stray grasses in between these, this would be a good time to do that before we shade the bottom of this hill. So I would go with some white and moon yellow mixed together. And if you want some grasses in here, send it down to inky consistency. And then just pull a few grassy grassy areas you know nothing big just a few little clumps of something going on you know how stuff grows in a field especially cornfield feels seems like there's stuff poking up everywhere well especially when it's been mowed down after harvest okay that looks pretty good. And you can put a little bit of a shadow, uh, just slightly, with maybe some burnt umber under your grassy areas. This is very, very sheer color here. Um, a lot of water, not much paint. Just creating a few little clumps of grass on here. Okay, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So now we want to shade down here at the base of this. Um, let me get a different brush. I don't want one quite that big. Okay, so down here because this hill kind of comes behind this one, although this one comes up. We're going to put this one behind. So I'm going to mix my uh, burnt umber and my soft black, two burnt umber to one soft black. Really work it into my brush and get it nice and sheer. And then we're going to take this along here. 
Make sure all your other painting is dry. Take my mop brush and kind of mop and settle that in there. And I'm going to dry that because I want to repeat it. I know right now it looks um, a little harsh, but we haven't done this hill yet. So when we do that hill, it will help wide angle out just a little bit. So you can see, I might put a little bit of shadow uh, coming off of this hill, like there's some corn stalks back here. Kind of give the illusion of some more stuff back there. Okay, and you can put some back on that hill. I didn't, you know, get that much detail. I think it looks pretty good. I really feel like the corn stalks need to be a little bit brighter. So let's grab our bright yellow and we're going to put a little bit of this on there to brighten them. Give them a little bit of brighter sun hitting on them. This is going to be on the right sides. So for these two, kind of be in the middle and on the left. But most of them will be, I mean not on the right sides, the left sides. I don't know my right from my left. Just ask my husband. He's always saying, your other left. All right, a little bit of brightening up. Oh, I think that helped that tremendously. Now it looks like it has way more glow from the sun hitting it. And uh, looks a little bit more like a, a little cornfield. I'm going to put just a couple of brown, if I can, get it to come off my brush, a couple of brown grasses in here, where I have my light ones because I don't want my grasses to just be light. So just a few. Goodness, I cannot get my paint to flow today. I have my heater on in here and I think it's drying everything out. Okay. I'm liking that much better. Love that brighter yellow on those corn stalks. So, uh, yeah, add that at the end. I think it's really going to make it uh, pop. And then I really feel like the tips the corn stalks. Could use a little bit of lightning with some white or some oyster beige. I'm gonna use mostly white I think. Ooh, that's, that's a lot. I think the corn stalks look pretty 
pretty darn good. All right, so I want to work a little bit on this hill, getting some highlight back here in the back before I come in and add my uh, bales of hay and my scarecrow over here. But it is coming out so darn cute. I am loving it so much. I do want to do one more thing on here. I want a little bit of orange glow coming onto this as well. So I'm going to thin down a little bit of burnt orange. And put a little, just kiss it. Kiss it on there. Just a little bit. And then I also want to take and float a little bit of the orange. go on to areas that we've already painted. So I don't want it to be on my corn stalk or my grasses or anything like that, which I just got it on there. Okay, a little bit of orange, I think, on there. It's going to make that look a little bit better. Any place that you get it on that you don't want it, um, just take a damp brush and remove it because it's just a wash of color so you don't really need to um, worry if you get it on something that you don't want it on just remove it with a damp brush all right so we're ready to move on from here let me tell you what i did i transferred on my shape of my scarecrow without the face stuff and then my hay bales and i painted two coats of moon yellow on my hay bales the face is two coats of oyster beige, the hat is two coats of pebble, and the trim on the hat and the shirt are two coats of country blue. So now we're ready to go from there. I want to paint the eyes in with a mix of country blue and white. And I'm going to put out a little bit of Blue Haven as well. going to I'm just going to um, mix my country blue and some white and get this really soft almost purpley blue color for the eyes you can paint them in with just the um, sky color if you want really it depends on what color eyes that, that you want on your scarecrow and your eyes can be shaped any shape that you want them to be. Okay, the white part of the eyes, I don't want to be pure white, so I'm going to mix just a tiny bit of the Blue Haven in with it moisture out of my brush here. So it's going to be just slightly tinted. If we don't like it after this first coat, we can definitely change that to just pure white. I'm not going to make this one quite as big as what I drew it, so I can come in and erase that line there. Make the eyes match a little bit better. The nose I'm going to paint in with Cad Orange. And everything will require two coats. Now, if you do not go over your graphite lines that you drew on here, as you can see, I'm trying not to go over them here on the nose. I can come in and remove them after this first coat. 
and get them off my project. The mouth, I'm going to mix wild berry and white. And get a nice pink on here. And again, we will come in and do two coats. I'm going to try and stay off my graphite line so I can erase them. And I was going to put a rope around the neck to hold the, the scarf thing on, and I still may do that right now. I am not planning on doing that. Okay. Um, I want to go ahead and erase my graphite lines and get a second coat on everything. Make sure your paint is dry. I'll probably make that nose just a little bit bigger. can be a little bit more defined. I'll put a second coat on my nose. And make it just a touch wider. not dry right there so I'm just lifting it so I'm gonna let that dry just want to remove a little bit on the side of the nose damp brush Zoom in just a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay, uh, let me put a second coat on the mouth real quick. And then we'll go up and work on the eyes. Just make a nice pink color that you like. It can be darker or lighter than mine, whatever you like. quick second wash of color up here just to kind of fill in and smooth out the color. Oop, that's a little wide. You don't always have to um, do a solid painting in on your second coat. A lot of times it's just filling in the gaps that the first coat didn't get. As long as your paint's not incredibly thin. Okay, now I'm going to go to my white with a little bit of Blue Haven in it. I definitely want to make sure I have all the moisture out of my brush for this. At this point, when you're painting in your eye, if you feel like you have gotten the shape out, that you don't like it, we've just got a base color on the face. 
so we can touch up anything that we need. I feel like right there it's a little wide on the eye. touch up and clean up that way. Okay, I really feel like this eye over here is just shaped not right. And let me do a little defining on this one. little kind of hook on that one. So let me try and make a little bit of a hook on this side. Ooh, that was too much. Well, I don't think I'm going to get it just like that other side. At all. So, I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to be outlining all this stuff anyway, so. Okay. All right, uh, let's put some black in the eye then. Let me grab some black out. I'm going to draw on my eye here to determine where I want to put my black. Let me look at my line drawing. I actually had almost the whole eye filled in with black. So we'll leave a little bit of blue. I guess we didn't need to paint the whole eye in with blue. We could have just done a little strip there. But it's okay. I almost forgot I was going to put black in here, so... Follow the shape of your eye so that everything goes together nicely. And he's starting to come to life right now, that's for sure. here than what I would like. Oh goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Getting a little wild with my brush here. Okay. That's going to look pretty good. I need to go up this edge a little bit, clean that up. I 
Okay, that's going to be pretty good right there. Now I want to dry brush on the cheeks and you can use the same brush that we used on the clouds and just put a little bit of paint on the top of it or you can get a um, scruffy type brush and dry brush with it. So we're going to use that pink color. So I'm going to load some pink on this dry scruffy brush and offload it onto a dry paper towel. Okay, and then just very gently in a circular motion, begin rubbing this on here, blushing up the cheeks as much as you would like. Very gentle, start out with gentle pressure. You can add more pressure as, got a little bump on the cheek there. Probably can't remove that without removing all the paint underneath it, so. I'm just going to go with it. Okay, so you can make the cheeks glow as much as you would like. Okay, and that was just with that, that pink. I might come back and brighten those later. I don't know, but for now, I think they're going to be okay. All right, let me grab it. Okay, I've grabbed a small angle brush and I want to shade on the mouth. And I'm just going to use the straight pink, the, what do we got, wild berry. And I'm using a, a quarter inch angle brush, which I do not rarely use. They just don't hold enough paint and water for me, but since these are smaller areas, I thought they would work out pretty good. And I'm going to go underneath the top lip there. Leave it light just down here at the center of the lip and we will shade in that area. I didn't get quite in her mouth straight or its mouth straight. I'm not saying it's a girl. <laughs> it's not a girl. Okay, let's add a little highlight on that mouth. want a little bit along this is just white just along that bottom edge of the lip and I'm gonna bring a little bit up into the center of the lip soften it all out with the water edge just the very corner of that heel it's all gonna pretty much fade down in there. Okay. So that's really all we got to do to the lip there. Shade on the nose with some burnt orange if it will show up. I might have to add a little bit of darker color to it. I'm going to keep the top. Well, actually, I'll keep the bottom light kind of match the lip. So we'll shade along the edges. Yep, I'm going to have to add a little bit of burnt umber in here, I think. Just to darken it. Just a little bit. So just add a tiny bit of burnt umber to that orange just to get it a little bit darker. So I just went on the right and top side 
Actually, I should have done it on the other side because we can have the light coming from the sun on the nose. So I'm just going to remove that and put it on the other side. I could remove it because the paint wasn't cured. It was still wet and I just took some water with a damp brush and removed it. So we'll go on the other side here. shading color. We need to let that dry. I want to add just the tiniest little bit of um, shadow in the eyes. I'm going to use a little bit of country, country blue and a tiny little bit of burnt umber. you can omit this step if you want it really is the smallest amount of paint and if you don't want to do this then you can leave it off I like to use my finger smooth it out and it also removes a little bit of the paint so that it's not line there so that's not a really stark line and I'll take my country blue actually I'm gonna grab some uniform blue out I'm gonna shade with some uniform blue just on the outer edge of the blue part This is such a small area, so don't feel like you have to do this if you don't think that you have enough control over your brush. I'm going to mix a tiny little bit of black in there so I can get that a little bit darker. Stay out of the black. It's just in this blue area. Ooh, that's pretty dark. We're going to highlight in the center. Wipe some of that paint off. Down. So we could use this color down in the lower part of the eyes. I think it would look a little bit better. Coming around the edges and shaping just slightly. Okay, so that was. That was on the blue. I'm going to touch up my black here. That was on the blue and it was the country blue with a little bit of black in it. Okay, I'm going to make a highlight in that eye now. Down in the lower part and then we'll go up and do a dot in the upper part or some dashes or something. I'm going to turn this upside down and I've got a little bit of white in my brush and I'm going to bring that up into the eye like this. Clean up my black. And do it over here. don't want it to fill the eye. So it's covering up all of your blue. Take a little bit of it out. That gives a little sparkle to the lower part of the eye. I'm going to clean up my black. You know, any of these steps that you want to omit, you can. dot of white up in the upper eye. Maybe 
see a couple of dots I haven't decided yet. So maybe a dot and a dash. Dot and a dash. We want the eyes to match. Make this dot a little bit bigger. And this dash just a tiny bit longer. And that's got the eyes. Let's go back to the nose. I'm going to darken up on the nose just a little bit, so I'm going to take just burnt umber on that edge. I'm going to leave the mouth like it is, and now I'm going to take some white and I'm going to lighten up on the other side of the nose. Just put a little bit down in that corner, take the edge of the brush, and just kind of smooth it up that side of the nose. Taking the water edge and just blending it out. We can kiss a little yellow on there from the sun. That would be the bright yellow. But only if you want to. I mean, it's optional. I'm not even sure this is going to show up on that orange. It's such a transparent color. There we go. Put just a little bit of it on there. Not much. Super easy peasy. All right, I'm going to thin some burnt umber with some water and get it nice inky consistency. I want to put some stitch lines uh, coming down the face. You want it. Let's make sure they go all the way up. face. Okay, so we're going to start shading on the face now. So Let's begin shading with, I'm going to shade with some burnt umber. I'm going to have to grab a different brush here. Try this one. See how it works. Of a line there. I don't like that, so I'm gonna grab a different brush. Okay, I've got a different brush, one I haven't used for a while, so let's give it a shot. I'm gonna grab my mop brush. I might want to start this out with the pebble color. Okay, so down here underneath the chin, before we shade the chin, I want to make these areas that look like it's uh, pulled tight. So I'm going to do a few of these on here. in between. Just using the chisel edge of this brush so I don't have to get a different brush. We're going to have hair and everything coming over uh, on this. I wanted, I do want to shade just a little bit so I'm really going to thin this down with some water to really lighten that color and go underneath the lip. Probably should go to a smaller brush doing that kind of stuff. I want to go under the nose and on the side of it. 
on the side of the eyes. Okay, and so now we can go underneath the chin. Make sure that the lines that you put on here are dry. A little bit more paint in my brush here. Really work it in with some water. I'll come along this edge out here. And of course we'll come back and darken a lot of that. I also want to put some hash marks on my, to give the look of, and I think I might do this with some pebble so it's not quite as dark as burnt umber. We can come back with some burnt umber and add that in later if we want it more dark. So just, I just want it to look like gunny sack type of material. Let's put some on the face. Some of this will be covered up. Boy, I'm not getting any flow off of this brush at all. Touch it back with my finger. Okay, just a few hash marks on there. If I had you on camera for that, I probably didn't have you on camera for none of it. Did not look up one time to see where my camera shot was. Okay, and that was with the pebble color. We're going to add some eyelashes on, it, on his uh, eyes here in a little bit. I want to shade underneath the uh, hat again. here. We're going to be highlighting on it next. I want to get the shading part done. And under here, we need a little bit of shading under here. Where it kind of turns out right there. Tiny bit of shading here. It needs to be a little bit darker. And I'm going to go into my wrinkles here and make them deeper, darker. Maybe carry them down a little bit. I'm not going to worry about shading on the actual face yet because I want to do that after we get the straw hair in. So I'm going to go up and work on the hat now. I want some soft black for the hat. I'm first going to put some hash, hash marks on it with some um, burnt umber.
We're going to highlight on the face, especially down here and here. But let's go up here and add some hash marks. Uh, what am I using? I'm using burnt ember. Make sure your paint is really thin and you're staying up on the very tip of the brush. Okay, just kind of put them all over the, the hat there. Okay, before we go on to shading the hat, I think I might shade on the hat band. Um, let's see. I actually think I'm going to go ahead and highlight on the chin. I'm going to take a little bit of my base color, which was oyster beige, get a little bit more out. And a little bit of white. Just an equal, equal mix there. We're just going to lighten up the color that we base coated it in with and create a highlight edge here. Come along the right edge and a little bit along the front. And we're going to go along the chin. We can come a little bit up this edge because I'm not really sure where the hair will end up. So we'll go ahead and add a little bit of this highlight up at the edge. That's good going to shape that chin a little bit better. I'm going to get a little bit more white and go along this edge. I want it to be really bright on that edge there. Right down there we'll have just a little kiss of a highlight. Here. And I'm going to do just a tiny bit of white on this edge of the face and chin. So that's pretty good for now. I'm not going to worry about this area here and here because we have all of our straw hair going on there. Okay, let's go back to the hat with our soft black. Nice soft flow to this, so you're mixing it in your brush with a little bit of water. And we're gonna put a little bit of a lip on the outside edge of this hat right here. And then shade inside right here next to the face. This will be the more shadowy areas of the hat. We'll do the same thing over here. We want a little bit of a lip. And then next to the face. This is all going to be a little bit darker in here. I want to create a little bit of, of a rim here, so I'm going to go slightly above the edge. So bringing that rim all the way across. And some of this we won't even see when we're done. You know, once we put our hair and stuff in here. Let's go along this edge. 
I think I'll just go ahead and go over the blue with this color. I'm going to want to walk that out a little bit so I'll get it dry and repeat. Go underneath the band. And above the band. We'll go about halfway. And then this edge of the hat, if your first coat is dry, can make a little bit darker. I still want it to be even darker than that, so all the way down. I'm going to walk it out. And then I'm going to gently mop it. A little bit more in here. And in here. Taking the water edge and scooting that across. I need to bring this down. Well, the hat edges don't even match. How do you like that? Well, we'll cover that up with some straw. It's a cricket hat. We're just going to leave it a cricket hat. See? They don't quite line up. This one's a little bit longer than this one. So this one comes down at an angle where this one comes around. So that's how that looks. this area <clears throat> excuse me over here to be much darker than it is so I'm going to repeat I'm going to put more paint on my brush and really add some darkness here and walk it over and I'm going to mop this outer edge I'm not going to go into that because that is super crazy wet here on this edge because this is in the shadows so I can have a little bit darker edge that's still pretty wet in there so I don't want to get into that so I'll just remove it okay that's looking pretty good we're going to highlight <clears throat> on the hat now. And uh, I do want to kind of make the ribbon look different. So I think I'm going to make it a checked ribbon. So I'm going to take my country blue. No, actually I'm going to take my uniform blue. And even on the shirt down here, I'm going to make some checks. Make some of them a little bit fatter. Okay. <clears throat> 
<coughs> and the hat band I want to be checked as well. So I'm just going to make some lines across here. Oops. Putting my hand in the shirt, so let me turn this over. We're going to highlight on the hat now. I'm going to use some Oyster Beige for my first highlight. And um, go along the right edge and along the brim at the top here. I'm just going to go right over my blue. Bring that over just a little bit. And I'm just going to go along this edge. I'm on the toe of my brush here. And bring this highlight across. And let it kind of fade away as it gets over to that edge. And put a little bit of highlight out here. Not sure if the straw will cover this. If it does, then we don't have to worry about it. Let's do this on the shirt as well. Actually, on the shirt, I think I'm going to use some Blue Haven. On the hat, it kind of goes with the hat, so on the shirt, I'm going to use some Blue Haven on the shoulder. And then I'm going to shade underneath with my Uniform Blue that we put the stripes on with. So we're going to go underneath here. And create our dark area here. Come back and darken that. I really want that to look more like satin ribbon, but I'm not sure since I'm using, you know, kind of the same fabric here. If I want to do that, I'm going to brighten with some white along this edge. This white is pretty wet, so it's really going to fade down in there. So let's just do a hit and miss across the, the brim there. And we'll do some here. I'm not sure that other color was dry yet. A little bit of that other blue back on there. shade on the top of the, or highlight on the ribbon. Top and bottom of it. There we go. That helps that out quite a bit. That was just with some white. No, that was with Blue Haven. Sorry. And brighten up the white over here. Just in a couple of spots. Definitely want it brighter down here. That's not dry. Okay. 
and I want the shadow here darker so I think I'm going to take my uniform blue and add a little bit of black. And darken underneath here. looking pretty good. I think we're ready to add the straw on. I still have to finish out the mouth and do some more details on the face. Um, I think actually I'll finish the mouth out with some burnt umber. I was thinking of outlining everything with an identipan, but I don't think I will. So, just create the mouth here. And I'm not really sure if I want to outline the nose or not. graphite line that I didn't get paint on. And we'll put a couple of eyelashes on the eyes. A couple up here at the top. I'm trying to decide if I want to outline the entire eye or not. I think for now I'm just going to leave it like that. A couple of eyelashes at the top actually. I think I'll make a third one so that there's three eyelashes. Okay, so now I think we're ready for the straw. Okay, I thought I had my camera on, but not. I kissed just a little tiny bit of the bright yellow on the side to um, get the glow of the sun over here. Just a little bit there, there, tiny bit there, just there, there, and a little bit on the shoulder right here. Just a little kiss of that glow. Again, if you don't want to put that on yours, you can leave it off. So now we're ready to work on the um, straw. And we're going to use four colors here. Uh, moon yellow, antique gold, golden straw, and burnt umber. So you want to get all four of those colors out on your palette. All right, so we're ready to work on this down here before we do the straw on the hat because it's going it's going to lay over our field back here. And you can put some smaller bells of hay here, but I figured the straw hair is going to cover most of that up. But we want to start making like some grassy areas. So I've got that soft domed brush that I've got and I've got some antique gold. I loaded it, tapped it onto my paper towel, and now I'm almost laying it on its side and just tapping some like grassy stuff going on. I'm not going to worry about getting it into my bells of hay. Our uh, undercoat here is raw sienna, so we want to have a little bit of stuff going on, make it look like a little bit of a grassy field here. What's left after they bale the hay or straw, whatever, I guess it's hay.
and we're going to put a couple of colors on here and I'm just very lightly tapping. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush because I don't want to lay add a little bit too much there so I laid in a little bit heavy there. I want this to just be light so every time you load go to your paper towel and tap off the majority of the paint that's in the tip of the brush. And I'm loading just a tiny little bit at a time, not very much paint. Just go until you get it all filled in. More paint. Try and stay off my scarecrow there, but I'm not going to worry too much if I get it on the scarecrow. See, that's kind of a solid line. I don't like that. Um, but my straw is going to cover up a lot of that, so. And my hat I definitely want to stay off of because I won't be coming back with straw pieces up there. Although you could have a couple of pieces coming out of the hat or from behind it, I guess. Okay, so that was with Antique Gold. Okay, but we want to have some layers back in here. So we're going to do another color. I think our next one will be Golden Straw. So I just wiped the excess out of my brush. Now I'm going to load the same way with some golden straw. And let me see if I can get this brush to tickle upward with some like more clumpy stuff of grass. I might have to go to a rake brush here. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and wash this out. I won't be able to use it for a while since I got it wet now. And let me find a rake brush. And we'll load with some golden straw. And we'll see if we can pull some little grasses coming up. These don't need to be very tall. They don't have to fill the whole thing. We'll just do it randomly. This is a very large rake brush. Of course, I grabbed the next to the largest one I had instead of finding my smaller one. But if you have a smaller one than this, this is a 3 8 inch. So if you've got like a quarter inch, that would be good. Just put some little grasses in here. We'll come back with our final layer of grasses after we get our bales of hay done. So that we can have some coming up over our hay a little bit. That was kind of a solid little line there. I don't like that. Just take that off. Yeah, I'll come back in with the corner of my brush and tap. these more bigger open areas you can use the full width of the brush but in the smaller areas I would say stay up on the corner of the brush and this is still just kind of backgroundy stuff just kind of filling it in never know how a design is going to come together. I kind of have an idea in my head and then I just kind of start painting and see where it leads me. What elements I want to add or take away. And when I come in and do my final layer of grassy stuff because I want it to be more controlled. I will be using a um, 
liner brush probably so I can get a little bit more control. I'm not going to worry too much right there next to the scarecrow because we're going to be having a straw coming out of, from under his hat. It's going to be covering a lot of that up. So this is going to finish up what we're going to do to this for now because I want to go finish the scarecrow now. I'm going to finish the straw, but I needed this little bit of background stuff going on before I went any further. Okay, so you can use a small flat brush or a round brush that you can make into a flat, which I highly recommend. And we need the colors that we have here, which is um, antique gold, golden straw. I need a little bit more golden straw. Of course, we want some moon yellow, and we'll put some burnt, excuse me, burnt umber out. Maybe a little bit of white, because we may need to lighten up some of our colors here. White and burnt umber. way more paint out than I'm actually going to need. Okay, let me zoom in here on our scarecrow guy. Let's see if I can keep him on camera shot here. So I'm going to use a round brush. This is a rigger. This is one that you can flatten out and it will stay a flat shape as you paint it. It won't uh, bounce back too quickly. I'm going to start with some darker color. I've got my antique gold, but I want to add a little bit of burnt umber to it for uh, my more back pieces of hair. So I've got got it loaded. Flatten the bristles out. And then you're just going to come in here and make some jagged little um, hair stuff going on. I'm going to go back and forth between my colors here. And of course, you can make your straw any way that you want to. You can make it skinny, you can make it less jagged. But I do want a lot of um, stuff going on. So, and you're going to overlap. I'm going to have some littler pieces coming out from underneath here so we can just create a few of those up on the tip of the brush. And then you're just going to continue to layer. There's going to be some back here. I'm picking up between the um, antique gold. Sometimes I'll put a little white on my brush and then I'm picking up um, golden straw. <laughs> I wanted to call it corn straw for some reason. But I wanted it to look more jaggedy. And of course you'll have some that will be more on top. And I do want these to come down a little bit lower. Let me grab a little bit of burnt umber in my mix. I wipe my paint out. Too much paint in my brush right now, so I'm going to clean it out and load with some just some burnt umber. I want to make a couple of dark pieces coming in here. And again, I'm going to put several layers of straw on here. A little bit more water in my paint. I like the playfulness of the jaggedy straw. 
and I'm gonna have to wash my brush out again it looks like it's starting to get pretty full Put a few more burnt number ones in here I left my paint setting too long and so now it's not wanting to paint very well for me again your scarecrow you go with what you like the best okay this is moon yellow that I'm using now this a little bit more on top let me come in with my detail liner here in a minute and put some really fine stray pieces of straw I'm using just moon yellow right now back into a little bit of antique gold for this side so I think I need to bring it out a little bit more here but I need to do that bale of hay so I think I'm going to keep it right there for now because I want to come in with uh, my detail liner and add some thin lines and we'll try to shade a little bit to bring some of these more forward and add a little bit of white to bring some of those forward as well so I just grabbed random colors between antique gold burnt umber golden straw moon yellow and I did mix a little bit of white in there occasionally so I want this to dry so I can come back and add some brighter ones on top and then we can shade everything and separate everything. So I think right now we're going to go work on our bales of hay while the straw hair uh, continues to dry. Let's work on our hay bales here. So I've just drawn some curly lines in my hay bales. We're going to put some shadows inside them first before we finish out. So I'm going to take a, um, right now I've got a 3 8 inch angle brush, but I may go down to a, a quarter inch one. Let's see. Yep, quarter inch when I go to my smaller um, hay bales. So I'm side loading some burnt umber, and where these lines are, I want to shade inside here and start creating the look of some depth inside our hay bales and you can have this go as many loops as you want in here and I like the burnt umber because it's a little bit more of a transparent color so it won't take over We'll still be able to see a nice shadow in here. Of course, you're going to have to keep turning your project to get that curl in there. So I'm just going to keep my, my curly stuff pretty uh, much in the center of my straw here. Hay, hay bales. So, and your hay bales could be square. If you want square ones, make some square ones. I don't see too many square ones anymore. And just all the way around your curly Q things. Keep it center so it doesn't uh, take over. Okay. So that's how we're going to do all of them to get our first shading in here. Of course, we'll add some more shading at the bottom where they're kind of sitting on the ground, but we're going to have grasses and things coming up over them so we don't have to get too technical about 
where it's sitting. I mean, we will have some shadows coming from them like we did up here. So I'm going to go off camera and finish all of these because they're all done the same way. I don't want the video to be hours long. So go ahead and finish all of your um, hay bales with that burnt umber um, using whatever brush you like to use. Um, like I said, I'm using a 3 8 and a quarter inch. This one's a smaller angle brush, so I'm going to do one with it. And just take your time step on the tip of your brush. You've just got a little bit of paint on the corner of your brush. And the rest of the brush is loaded with water. So we can keep that nice soft color going here. You cannot float without water in your brush. So if your brush is not laying down a nice soft color, you do not have enough water. And you probably haven't worked the paint well into your brush. So, there we go. This one could be just a touch darker, I think. And now I'll go off camera and finish out the others. And we'll come back and add a little bit more detail to these. Okay, so our hail bales, hail, bales of hay, hay bales, um, to me look like cinnamon rolls. So. We've got a, a yummy thing going here. So I'm gonna go back over here because my scarecrow is dry now and I wanna start floating some color in here. So uh, I'm gonna use my burnt umber. I may go to some soft black to get a few darker areas in here. But for now, I'm just gonna use my burnt umber and my quarter inch. And I'm just going to pick a piece of hair, a piece of straw. I want this one to be on top, so I am going to add some shading with some burnt umber next to this one. I, I want to pull it forward. And then I'm just going to find a few more pieces that I want to do that to. Which ones do I want to appear more on top? a little bit more paint into my brush here. So this one looks like I would think I would like to have this piece on top. So we're just going to go around a few strands and create some that lay more on top. just by putting a little float right next to them. Now that pulls some of those up on top. We'll do the same over here. And I will darken a few of those with some soft black, but right now I'm just getting separations um, in them. separate some up over here and bring some of these more forward. We're going to be adding some lighter ones on top of this. So this is just separating some of the back straw. So don't think that this is all we're going to be doing. We, we have to put a few more lighter ones in here. We may need a few more darker ones. And you don't have to go the full length of any particular strand. You can just find a, a particular place within the strand that you want to go and add some shading. And we will be shading underneath the hat here, but I want to get more layers um, on here first. Okay, so that looks pretty good for our layer on there. So I'm going to grab a smaller brush here, one that I can make some more thin pieces going on here. So, I mean, because, you know, a scarecrow is not just going to have perfectly <laughs> perfect hair. So 
I'm going to take my moon yellow, a little bit of white, and mix it together. I'm just using a zero round brush. Um, I'm going to try it and see if it's going to give me the stroke that I want here. A little bit more white in my mix, I think. I want these to be really light. So I want a few really thin wiggly hairs in here. And these are going to be the ones that will be mostly on top. And we can have these going different directions. This is moon yellow with a little bit of white. And don't cover up all of your stuff that you got going on here. Maybe this is a girl scarecrow. I mean, we always think of them as boy scarecrows, but maybe this one's a girl. A little bit more white in my mix here. And I'm still just trying to be really loose and wiggly and back and forth and just having a little fun with her hair. Again, these are the topmost hairs. So let's create some that are just, they have a mind of their own. A little bit more water in my paint here. few more over here. Well that's a fun way to make them. Make them like 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 it's got a permanent. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so now that we have our more forward hairs on there, I think that really pushes all the other ones back. So we're going to do some final shading on the hair. I want to make sure all the paint is dry, so I'm going to quickly dry that. And now we're going to float some burnt umber. I'm going to go back to my small quarter inch angle brush here and I'm going to go with some burnt umber and I do want to put a little bit of soft black in the back parts of the hair so I'll show you how to do that in a minute. We're going to float underneath the, the hat brim here maybe if I can get the paint to flow here. That's a lot of paint so let me wipe off. I really want to push that hair that's right through here mostly under the under the hat brim. Okay, really set it up underneath there. And let me grab a little bit of soft black. I want to shade on her face as well with this burnt umber. So while I've got a nice thin color on my brush here, I'm going to just shade a little bit on this side. Just pity patting it. And I'll probably come back in and lighten up those hairs. Maybe not. I want to put some bright yellow ones on this side where the sun is hitting it. You know, we've got that bright glow on here. Okay, so now I'm going to go into my soft black. Really work that into my brush. And here's where I want to create a few really dark shadows back in here. A little bit of soft black. This is really going to make everything pop a little more forward. I don't have very much paint on my brush, so I just want to... Just a few places. If you uh, like the way that yours looks without the soft black, 
you can certainly do it leave it that way I just want a few more shadows and my soft black is pretty close to a wash here so I'm not making a lot of dark stuff going on pretty good. I might add just a little tiny scooch of this underneath the hat rim. And then let's get our bright yellow out and we can finish off our scarecrow here with some bright yellow and a detail brush. That round brush that I used and we're going to put a few, I might have to add a little white to get that to show up, a few bright, maybe a few bright ones, I don't think we're going to see this, so I think I'll just do a float on this hair over here with that yellow. Just give it a little kiss, Put a little bit more right there, a little kiss of the sun hitting on the hair right there. And maybe a little reflective sun is coming over here. Not too much, just a little wash. Just pity pat it on there. And uh, I think that will take care of it. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out so you can see our scarecrow. Oh, I love it. Now when I get this bale of hay done. I might come out and make this side of the hair a little bit fluffier out here going over. Just pull a few more because this side looks much thicker than the side. Of course, it's leaning that way so the, the straw from her hair is, or his hair, who's ever hair, is falling that direction. So um, that could be the case there. I'm going to put a few white ones in here I think. Just a few over here where maybe a little light is hitting. Okay. You can really have a lot of fun with the scarecrow's hair. Okay, I think that will finish off the scarecrow until I bring a few hairs over here. So now we just need to finish out our bales of hay, put a few grasses down here, and then we have some words, or a couple of words to put down here, because these bales of hay are our future scarecrows. So that's what I'm going to put down here, future scarecrows, but you can leave the words off when we get to that if you want. So let's finish out our bales of hay. Okay, I figured out how I would like to paint my bales of hay. So I want it to look like there's little pieces of stuff coming out of it. I don't want them to be smooth like they are now. So I'm going to take my moon yellow and white and mix it together. I'm going to work on this big one over here so you can really see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to start dabbing and creating X's and a little bit of water in my paint to make it flow. I'm just using a detail liner brush and I'm going to go all the way around with this color. I'll go off camera and do the rest of them after I do this one because it will take me a little while to finish all of these. But we're just going to start creating some little <clears throat> sprigs of grass. I could probably put some um, golden straw or antique gold. Let me put some antique gold. I think some antique gold would be good. I did not use it in my other one, but I think I will go back and use some in it because I think some varying colors here would be good. Kind of like we did the straw hair. We're going to use all those same colors and that's the antique gold there. It's not showing up a whole lot. I might use the antique gold more in the um, where the burnt umber shadows are. 
and these are just little dabs and X's and dashes and things like that. You can see how messy it is when you're up close. You can put some, um, what is it, we got raw sienna. You can put a few of those in there as well. I think I will do that in my darker areas, but I definitely want some of this coming off and out and creating some look of grasses coming out of it. I know up close it doesn't look like anything but a mess. So now I'm going to go into some raw sienna and put some of this in here and a little bit more water in my paint. And we'll just add some of these in here. We don't need a ton of these. We just need a little varying color. Close to where the, the, sh the shading is that we made that cinnamon roll look. Okay, and I'm going to add some... <clears throat> Oh, let's see. Moon yellow is what we base it in, so we can't go straight moon yellow. I'm going to see if the antique gold is going to show up any. And we'll put just a few of these in here. Need, oop, that's a big one. Need some color variants going on here. We don't want it all to be the same. And then we're going to highlight and shade on this. So we're going to highlight, get my bigger angle brush here. I'm going to begin highlighting with a little bit of white and a moon yellow mix. So it's going to be mostly white with just a tint of that moon yellow in there. And we'll just try and add some highlights in here into some of these sections. We don't want to cover up everything. This is a very sheer color just create a little bit of highlight going on in there. And we'll shade on the bottom of the hay bale with some burnt umber because it's going to be set here. Work a little bit more into my brush here. And burnt umber is pretty transparent so we can take that color down along the bottom edge maybe a little bit more in our curvy areas you know just on the the lower parts and then we are going to I'm going to add a little bit more burnt umber in here I think on the back side of this cuz I got a highlight in there now and I want to make sure that this shows up a little bit better okay and then we're gonna add some of that bright yellow glow from the Sun and you want to make sure that when you're doing it you know which direction the Sun is hitting it so the Sun is coming across this way so this one that I did over here the Sun is on this edge of it so it's going to hit the hay right there. So on this one, it's going to hit right here on the top of this straw or bale of hay. So I'm just going to keep it right there. Add a little bit more highlight in here. Right through here. If you feel like you lost any color, um, actually I think I want these to be a little more golden. So I'm going to take my antique gold and make a little wash of it and just wash that over my bale of hay. It's going to make it a little bit more golden. I didn't do that to this one over here so let me do that 
definitely needs to have that little more yellow golden color to it. So I like that a lot better. And I think I might brighten up my highlights here. I think I'm going to go on this side of my some little highlights back in there. And I think that's going to make that look a lot better. And I think I'll do one more wash of that antique gold on here. A lot of water, just a little bit of paint, wash, glaze, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not sure which to call it, but I always call it a wash. And it could just be a glaze, because I'm using mostly water. Okay, I'm gonna wide angle out, because I just have these two completed. So I'm gonna go finish all the rest of them, giving them some wild looking straw look. This one I might come back in with a few more white ones and make a few more coming out of there. And um, then we're going to create our shadow and then a few grasses sticking up. We're getting close to being done with this one. I think it is turning out so cute. Okay, I've got them all done now, but I want to kiss a little bit of orange onto where the sun is hitting them as well. So I have a little bit of yellow and orange both on here. that glow from the sun. I'm going to shade down here one more time. I did it with burnt umber, but I think I might darken it with a little bit of soft black. Just want to do a sheer little color of soft black because it will really take over. And I think a couple of these could use <clears throat> a little bit of soft black just in a couple places in our curls, our cinnamon roll curls. So just a reminder, we did a little bit of moon yellow and white wiggly lines, a little bit of um, raw sienna and a little bit of antique gold. We shaded with burnt umber and then I just went back over it with some soft black if you need it. If you don't need it, don't do that. Um, <clears throat> then we did some yellow, or I highlighted with white and um, then we just did a little bit of yellow and orange for the sun glow on them. Okay, so now we want to work on creating their shadows and I think I'm going to go to a flat brush for this. use my burnt umber here and I'm going to use a lot a lot of water in my brush and I'm just going to pick up some burnt umber and blend that into my brush it's going to be pretty sheer to start out with and we can come back in and darken and the sun's coming this way so we want our shadow coming off of them. So I'm going to keep this a pretty light color to begin with. This one will just have a little bit right there. Make your shadow bigger where it hits the bale of hay. Ooh, that's like straight paint right there. And then it will get narrower as it comes toward you. Okay. 
Okay, let's go up here to this big one. And this one, this shadow is going to be almost coming straight at us. And this one could actually be moved over a little bit, so I might take a wet brush and bring that one more down center. And then this one will kind of go over towards the scarecrow. So. <coughs> I'm just going to remove that right there and change the direction, make it a little bit more coming at me. Okay, and of course we'll want to darken those. So I'm going to do the burnt umber again, a little bit of water, and my brush, I want to be able to move the paint, I'm going to start where I began a while ago, and I really want it ooh, dark right next to the uh, bell of hay. And then it can get lighter as it comes out. That one's still pretty wet, so we have to come back and do that one. So that was just with burnt umber two times. I want to lighten the heel back here a little bit. I'm going to take my my domed brushes. I had plenty of time to dry, so I'm going to get a little bit of oh, wrong color. Um, that was golden straw that I got. Let's see if I'm going to like golden straw. I want to go moon yellow. Get a little bit more of a glow back here. Along this hill. Just tap it a little bit. Bring that more to the front. We're still going to put some little grasses and stuff in here. Ooh. I want it on the hat. That's where you can block that off with a post-it note or a piece of paper. I should wide angle out so you can see the whole thing. That would probably be helpful. So I just did a little bit of moon yellow along the edge of this hill right here that the straw is on, okay? All right, I'm gonna clean that brush out. I don't know if I'm gonna need it again, so I'm just gonna clean it on a wet spot on my paper towel and then dry it off. It's still got a little bit of yellow in there, but I might have to use it again, so I wanna make sure it's dry and ready to go for me uh, when I need it. Okay, these are dry, so I'm going to take some soft black and I'm just going to go right next to the bale of hay with this color. This will be the darkest shadow and I'll pull it out just slightly. This is going to be right next to the bale, and then it's just going to come out a little bit. Okay, make sure you're following the direction that the sun will be casting the shadow. I'm 
one more here. Okay. That looks pretty good. Got a little bit bigger shadow here. longer of a shadow on this one because these two will be casting the biggest shadows here. And if you need to repeat your soft black to get it a little more pronounced, go right ahead and do that. I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight here so I can bring that one more forward. looking pretty good. Alright, I'm going to pull a few hairs on the scarecrow with some thinned paint. Moon yellow and white mix, I think. I just want a few of these top hairs coming over. Okay, that looks better. That pushes that bell of hay back behind the scarecrow a little bit. So that just took a couple of little squiggly lines to do that. Looking super cute. Okay, so now we're going to finish some like individual grasses or clusters of grasses around our bells. And, um, and then we can add our lettering on. We're almost done with this one. Isn't this just the cutest thing ever? Okay, let's start on our grasses. Okay, let's see what color I want my grasses to be. Um, I'm going to use some antique gold first, I think. Let's see if it's going to stand on top of this color. I'm going to thin it down. Put a little bit more out here. Thin it down with a little bit of water so it will flow off of a detail liner easily. And then we're just going to come in and start making some little clusters of grasses in here. You can even go into our shadowy areas. They'll have some in there. here they won't be as tall because they are farther away so make them a little bit shorter back here and you can put in as many little clusters as you would like I think I want quite a few in mine small brushes you have to load very frequently so I'll be putting a couple over here Over here. <laughs> Didn't even have that on camera. I just put a couple little ones over there. I'm going to put a little bit more on top of some of these so they'll really stand on top here. Give them a little bit of, you know, curl to them. You have to have plenty of water mixed in with your paint to make it inky consistency. So it, you can stay up on the tip of the brush and it will flow off of the brush easily. Now this is just our first layer here. We're going to add another color or two on here. So Just some little random stuff back here. Remember, this is much shorter back here, so don't get carried away back here in the back. And we're doing antique gold. Okay, that's got us some good little clusters of grass. So we are now going to apply a, another color on top of them. I think I'm going to go with the 
maybe the moon yellow. Let's see if that's going to be too bright. Might be too big of a jump. Oh, not too bad. All right, we'll go with some moon yellow on here. Just a few little teeny tiny little grasses. Back here, they're so little. Up here, they will definitely have more character and stuff going on with them. And we'll be washing some colors over these, especially for the ones that are in the shadow areas. They'll still retain that they are there and a little bit brighter, so. on the tippy toe of your brush. Inky consistency paint. One more over here. And then I'm going to come over here and do these. A little bit more water. Okay, and that was with Moon Yellow. A little bit more on this one. You can come in and do as many layers on them as you want. I like to bring the lighter ones down a little bit below where I put that first cluster. And that gives it a little bit more dimension. I'm going to come back in here with the moon yellow one more time, a little bit more forward than I did the last moon yellow. And these over here, I'm not going to do that too. I'm just going to leave them. Okay, that's got us some nice little clusters of grass. I'm going to wash my brush. I could have left that moon yellow in there. It would have been just fine. I'll go into some white. If you still have a little moon yellow in your brush, no problem. We're going to put a little bit of white or white and moon yellow mix, whatever you have. Just a couple not too many. Keep the ones in the back as thin as possible. These are the ones that are getting a little bit more of the sunlight. I think the um, white and moon yellow would probably be the best mix to go with there. Okay, I want to shade underneath them. We're going to use our burnt umber. Let me get some fresh burnt umber out. So we used antique gold, moon yellow, and then mostly white with a little bit of moon yellow in our brush. And now we'll kind of set these grasses with a little bit of burnt umber underneath them. And they can have a little bit of a shadow coming off of them too.
This is burnt umber. did these as well so that was with burnt umber I don't think we need to really do it more than one time with the burnt umber um, we can wash a little burnt umber over the ones that are in the shadow line just to take them down a little bit not too many of those and then we want to add a few little strokes of that bright yellow onto a couple of them Not too much of this because it really is super bright and will take over so quickly. But we'll just kiss a few. Okay, wherever you feel like maybe the sun is hitting it, you could also go with some of that uh, burnt orange in there. I think the orange would be better. Put the orange. You could just wash the orange over or just put a few little small strokes of orange in there. Okay. Alright, I think that's good enough. Okay. So that's got our little clusters of grass in there. So all we have left to do is um, put our lettering on. So, wide angle out. We want to get our lettering transferred onto this. Oh, how fun is this? If you feel like your hay is not as bright as you would like, I feel like it could use a little bit of brightening. I'm going to go back into my antique gold. I don't know if I want to mix moon yellow with it or not. Let me give that a shot. I want it to have that antique gold look. wash over inside the curly Q parts on the lower try and stay out of the burnt ember or you could wash over them with some moon yellow if you feel like they need that color and okay I want to create a little bit of glow back here on the hill I think that orange. I'm just going to wash some over the hill. Bring it a little bit forward. Put some back here. Glow of the sun. A little bit more. It needs to be darker. A little bit darker. And that orange can kiss throughout the. Ooh, maybe kiss a little bit more on our bales. And we can kiss some of that pretty much every place. bit of orange glow. A little bit of orange in our scarecrow or on the scarecrow's hair. A little bit darker I think.
All right, a little bit more of that orange glow on there, I think, helped a lot. Okay. I'll have to put some of that orange glow on the hat in every everywhere because I put the yellow on there, but I think I want some of that orange to be on here. of this right along there Those are looking pretty good. And you could also add some of the oyster beige into your hay as well. I almost feel like my hay needs to be more yellow, but I've put as much antique gold on there as I think I should. So let's get ready for the lettering. Okay, I felt like my, my bales of hay were still just looking like cinnamon rolls. <laughs> So I'm going to go back in with just moon yellow and put some more grassy stuff back in here all over them and make sure that we can see this. I'm even going into the shadowy areas. I'm putting it everywhere. It's going to uh, help make them stop looking like cinnamon rolls, I think. And it's just a dibbing, dashing, slashing, hashing, nothing serious. Maybe through here I might add a little bit of white. So I'll just go back over them. I feel like all those washes just really took away from how I wanted these to look. And so just going back in with some moon yellow in a couple places I'll put some white and I think this is going to help a lot Just little hash marks, wiggles and jiggles, and don't don't get caught up in in how it's looking. You know, we're not going for anything perfect here. This is just a fun, playful piece, and I want it to stay playful looking and still have some. You know, you can tell it's a. <laughs> I want you to be able to tell it's a bale of hay. And of course, you can make your bales of hay look however you want them to look. Okay, so really the scarecrow is the focal point on this one. And the lettering when we add it. And then you look behind everything and say, oh, that's what we're going to make our scarecrows out of. Fun! Okay, I'm going to get my letters transferred on. Okay, let me zoom in here because I'm not sure you can see. It says future scarecrows. So I'm going to use an identipen 
and draw these letters in. I do not care it ha if they are perfect. I want a dot. I, I want the letters to be fun. So. Now, if you're worried about your letters lining up, although I think these letters would be fun if they did not, you know, if they were a little bit higher or lower than each other, they would be really fun. You can draw a line on your line drawing. And then, um... Make sure everything's straight on your board. I always trace around my surface so I can see where exactly if I'm placing my line drawing where it needs to be. is way too small. My R got a little big. Okay, we've got future scarecrows. Uh -um. Let's white angle out because I think I'm going to do a little bit more to the lettering. You know, I can't just leave it like it is. My C does look littler than the rest, but what's done is done. So I want to make sure this ink is dry because I need to erase any graphite lines that are still on here that I didn't cover up. rest of them look good. So uh, we need to create a little bit of a highlight on these letters so that you can see them a little bit better. So I'm going to use some white and my detail brush. Now you can use a white paint pen, a white gel pen. So I'm going to highlight just on the letters with some white. This is really going to fade down in there so it won't stand on top too much. You could do a drop shadow which is what I normally do with my letters. But since I made them black I can't really do a drop shadow with black. And I could shade around the letters which I still might do. Okay, so we put a little something on top. I think they are going to have to have a little bit of shading around there. So let's shade them. I'm going to go with um, You know what? I think I'm just going to shade them with black and make the letters have a cast shadow of black. Okay, I always like to go on to the left, but since the sun is over here, I'm going to go on the right sides. I think I should get my smaller, my smaller paper brush do this. Put a little water out here because I'm going to need it. Okay, here we go. We're going to put this just on 
on the right side. this to make it a little bit darker. That looks super cool. I'm definitely going to repeat and make it darker. That looks really cool. So I'm going to repeat that. I think I forgot the tea altogether last time. Didn't look like it had any paint by it. He got big, didn't it? Actually, on the S, yes, it should be on this side. You do not have to do this if this is not something that you like. I'll probably go back over my highlight on them one more time and brighten that. brightening of that white on there and I think we will call this one done. Normally I shade around my complete surface but on this one I think I will leave it. really good. Future Scarecrows. You could make your lettering any color that you want. You could leave it off, you could change it, make it something else completely. angle out and we can see this a little bit better. Oh there we go. Get it more in the center of the screen. That helps. Super, super cute. I love how this turned out. So much fun. Oh my gosh, who doesn't love to paint something for fall? Me. I love it. 
I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm going to put a couple of gold strands. One yellow or antique gold, one of the two back in here, kind of over that orange. I want the orange to look like it's hitting it, but I don't want it to um, make it look like the hair is orange, you know what I'm saying? Okay, that looks good. All right, I think I'm very happy with this piece. Super, super cute. I hope that you guys have enjoyed painting this and I cannot wait to see your pieces. Put this on anything that you like. This is a surface from my website, um, but uh, it can be on anything. Oh my gosh, wouldn't this be so cute hanging on your front door in the fall? I love it. Thanks so much for painting with me, everybody. I hope you give me a thumbs up, like, share, and comment on my videos. I appreciate you all. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.